Dr. Stephanie Ganaway Paisley is a professor, a mental health expert, a teacher, a former summary court judge, and now a candidate for North Charleston Mayor. I talk one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Paisley for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. Dr. Stephanie Ganaway Paisley, welcome back to Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you. Glad to be back. Oh, I appreciate it greatly. I'm bringing you back on Quentin's Full Subs because this time around, Judge, you are actually a candidate for North Charleston mayor. And I know that you announced that you were going to run for mayor earlier this year. I now did. you're in a race with at least, what, 11 people, I believe? 10, actually. How exactly are you standing out? Uh, well, you know, according to my campaign team, you know, we're looking good. We're delivering the message that I think people want to hear. Um, based on my record, I, I'm known for delivering what I state. Um, you know, with my background as a retired judge, I'm dedicated my career to upholding the principles of fairness and equity. Um, as a professor of psychology, I have nurtured young minds and promoted the importance of mental well-being. And my tenure as a special education teacher certified in emotional disability has truly given me a firsthand understanding of the unique challenges faced by our students with special needs. So, you know, I'm also a business owner who, who knows the importance of a thriving local economy. And I've served as a business agent advocating for the rights of our workers. But my educational journey didn't stop there, Quentin. You know, I earned a PhD in psychology, which is a testament to my commitment to academic excellence and informed decision making. Making So now I am ready to take on the role of mayor, focusing on a platform that addresses the uh, pressing issues facing our community. We will tackle high crime rates head on, ensuring safety for all residents. Uh, we will address affordable housing. Affordable housing will become a reality, not a distant dream. Um, more than 20% of the residents in North Charleston fall below the poverty line. So we'll extend our hands to the homeless, uh, to the veterans, and revitalize our inf infrastructure to create a more inclusive, uh, prosperous, and secure city. And I just believe together we can build a brighter future, one that champions justice, one that champions education and community. Um, so I humbly, humbly ask for those who are listening, um, for their support, uh, for their belief and power of unity and the potential for progress. And together we can shape this city where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. Well, that was the end of the interview right there, Judge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but I want to talk to you in depth about those same issues right there that you just mentioned in just a second. But let me back it up, Judge. As we all know, here in Charleston County, you actually ran last year, 2022, as a Democratic candidate for Charleston County Probate Court Judge. That's you correct. actually ran against uh, the former uh, Probate Court Judge, Tamara Curry. She actually beat you, Judge, 76 to 23 percent. With your 23 percent, how do you hope to be elected mayor? Well, you know, running countywide and running in the city of North Charleston, you know, it's, it's, it's a different uh, and separate um, entities uh, or age agencies uh, by way of one is for the county and one is for the city. And in 2018, when I ran, I won the primary um, and won it well over a thousand votes. And whatever strategies that was used uh, in the last election, uh, that person was successful. Uh, but this is a new day and a new election. And we're talking about now focusing on a city where there are concerns about racial discrimination by police and the culture of the city can be impacted from top down. So racial and cultural sensitivity will be provided in every department, especially the police department. There will be zero tolerance, but I will make sure that everyone gets the training and resources up front. This will be the culture and, and policy of the city. It's about treating people with dignity and treating people with um, respect. You know, unfortunately, when I have walked the streets in North Charleston, uh, some citizens in North Charleston feel that there is a bias when it comes to the police department. So I need to get from uh, how someone's being pulled over from having a tail light out to getting arrested. You know, those are concerns with me. Uh, I will make sure that racial profiling is eliminated to a large degree. 
So some of this could have been put into action five, ten years ago. But you all asked for uh, this issue has has come up since 2019 with certain agencies that had had a concern where people make promises to make changes, but it hasn't happened. I look at juvenile justice, where I believe in second chances. When I served on the bench, I understood that issues is 60% of the jails are housed with adults and juveniles, and it's made up of the minority group of the community. This can be, imp this, this can be impacted by the police department. So the policies of the city has to address the root causes of the catalyst for people to commit crimes such as poverty and socioeconomic. You know, these are the things that we're going to look at as as mayor in the city of North Charleston. And like you said, you know, I brought up affordable housing. Yeah, and so I want to talk about families in North yeah. Charleston live below the poverty line. Yeah, and I want to talk to you more about that, Judge, about affordable housing, crime, and the racial disparities in just a moment. But going back to 2022 in that election for Charleston County Probate Court, uh, Judge, you lost 23 by 23. You lost actually 23 percent. So what parts of North Charleston did you actually want in, in that particular race? I don't have those stats in front of me, Quentin, but to be honest with you, in all due respect, that's not of an interest to me right now of what took place in 2022. What I'm interested in now is looking at affordable housing and the 20% of our families in North Charleston that live be below that poverty line. You know, yeah. where I'm looking at a housing trust fund that could be a uh, valuable tool to help citizens in North Charleston by addressing affordable housing needs and providing support to those struggling with, with housing-related challenges. That's what's important to me now. I understand. Where I will address the needs for affordable housing by working with the people and council. We will make sure that we mandate on the behalf of the people. The developers uh, want to get here to this market because they know about the growth here in North Charleston. So we want to make sure they will meet our requirements and have the units for affordable housing sure. in their plan. First and foremost, and, and provision will be made for equitable housing to yes. limit displacement uh, to for the current residents. And or you know, they, will, they, yeah, they, they, they will not break ground if it doesn't happen. And I want to talk to you about that in just a second. But Judge, let me ask you, what strategies do you have in place now for this mayoral campaign to make sure you don't get back to 23% in the election? The strategy that we have is ones I just talked about is getting out, knocking on doors, talking to citizens. You know, I, when I came out of that election in 2022, um, I was asked by citizens of North Charleston to run for mayor. They said, look, with the strategies that you want to implement in regards to mental health, um, looking at your educational background, looking at your compassion, your strength, your skills, your experience. Uh, we need you in North Charleston. I thought about it. Uh, I did what most people do when they are of faith. I prayed about it. And I talked to the most wisest person that I felt lives on the, the face of this earth, which is my father, who's 90 years old. And we prayed together about it. My family came together and said, you know what? If the citizens have asked you to run, and if you really believe that they will stand with you, then run. And this is why we're running. Okay. And, and Judge, let me ask you, between from the time that you... I actually lost that primary in 2022 to now being a mayor. Who were you actually supporting for mayor of North Charleston at that time? At the time, I was uh, supporting another candidate, but I'm not interested in, in releasing any names about that because I don't think that has anything to do with my platform and, and the strategies that we're going to bring to the city of North Charleston. Again, mm -hmm. you yes, know, I'm looking at I'm looking at issues like environmental justice that seeks to ensure that, that all communities, regardless of the race or income, have equal protection from environmental hazards and access to um, environmental benefits. To me, that's what's important. Environmental injustice can be found in African American communities in our air and our water, our food and environment. That's what's important to me. And you know, we the, the citizens of North Charleston need a leader such as myself. Who understands and embraces the need uh, and, and to address this issue? And I will address the issue with urgency every time. Well, let me jump right into it. How many residents did the city of Ch North Charleston gain in 2022? I don't know how many residents the city gained. I'm not with that statistics, um, um, Quentin. What I am, what I do know that is that I will require my team to have a 25 year vision for every major project to see how this project would affect the next generation. See, I'm not with statistics. Yes, ma'am. I am with resolutions and problems. I understand. Uh, problems. Yes, ma'am. So any have... development that is proposed, mm -hmm. uh, must talk about what it will look over. 
of how it would look over the next 25 years. Hmm. This will help us. This will help me as a mayor to see the unforeseen. For example, yes, ma'am. my proposal for developing the old naval base, which I find to be important, you know, we must know yes. how we will address the water and land use and right. bring an opportunity for people to have access to fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. You know, and so in smart growth, environmental impact is always considered and will be considered for 25 years yes, under my leadership. So let me ask you this, Dan. Now, how many infrastructure and development projects are going on right now in the city of North Charleston? I don't know how many are going on right now, but I can tell you one thing. When it comes down to infrastructure, that's one of the issues that we have a concern about as well. You know, well, we're looking at the rapid uh, transportation system right. um, to make sure that the hubs are, are strategically placed. Because we know where hubs are, if there's a housing residential there, area there, because uh, I believe in mixed-use development, that it can increase the property value. We want to make sure that it's strategically placed where senior citizens will have access to it. Senior citizens, most of them live on a fixed income. They shouldn't have to get Uber and pay a taxi cab to take them to their doctor's appointment in the city of North Charleston, the second largest city in the state of South Carolina. We're soon to be uh, the third largest city, soon to be the second largest city. We need to have reliable transportation. We need to make sure that uh, there is less traffic congestion. We so, need to make sure that the, not only is the transportation reliable, but it needs to be frequent and needs to be affordable. And when these people get to their destination, we need to make sure that we're working with the Berkeley County, Dorchester County, and other areas of Charleston County yes, to make sure that people can be able to transfer to get to their location. So how do you fix traffic now without that infrastructure? Well, with, with this infra that infrastructure will be put it, will be put in place, and that's how we will help fix the problem. And not only does it not only does rapid transportation um, reduces uh, pollution because people not many people will drive, uh, it would also build relationships because people will come together and they will talk uh, during their route to their different location. So, Judge, let me ask you: What environmental study have you and your team done for the city of North Charleston? We have looked at several environmental studies to where we have looked at how the, again, what I just talked about to you a, a few minutes ago, to where, where this environmental justice, where we look at what seeks the, that all communities, regardless of race or income, that they all should have equal protection from environmental hazards. With companies that are releasing pollution and dangerous chemicals over community, that we will look at that and put that in place. If it can't stop, we'll shut it down. What environmental, make, yeah, what environmental hazards are right now in the city of North Charleston? Some of the environmental hazards in the city of North Charleston, you know, to not call any companies or out by name, uh, Quentin, is that there are companies that releases chemicals over neighborhoods in North Charleston. What and we want to make sure that these, that these companies are held responsible and we want to make sure that these uh, communities are safe. And if they cannot come into compliance, then we will shut them down. What neighborhoods are you referring to, Judge? Uh, just some neighborhoods in, in North Charleston, uh, uh, Quentin. Any five of top five? No, I don't know five or top five. Uh, I'm talking about the city of North Charleston as a whole. Wherever there's companies there and there's hazardous that's going on there, uh, then that, that is some of the areas that we will look at to, to shut down that problem. But so to me, what the most right important, the, to me, the most important thing that I find to be interesting that I want to look at is more than the environmental uh, injustice, which is one of our concerns. But as mayor, I also want to play a critical role in implementing access to mental health and primary and care uh, yeah. services in our community. Yeah, I'll get that. So, to, yeah, yeah, I'll get that. So when when, when yes, people have a mental health crisis, people usually call 911 and yes, the police shows up to handle a violent situation instead of a mental health crisis. Yes, ma'am. So mental health crisis victims do not need to be locked up. That's one of our concerns, but provided medical care. So I yes, see a funding gap there. And okay. I would make sure that the city along with you know one or two hospitals that's in place come together to invest in mental health services provided in the city. And they will be trained on how to deal with the persons on site. But going back to environmental injustice, just, just Judge uh, Ganaway Paisley, let me ask you then, what, what, can, what companies are near these neighborhoods that are get, releasing these alleged chemicals? Quinn, I think I answered that question already. No, you didn't uh, give me any. I don't have a list of properties. I know what our research look like, and I know that there are, there are, there are companies in North Charleston to where we do have some concern. And that's what? about as much as I'm, I'm going to answer on that. What other concerns do you have, though? Uh, again, the, when, when it comes down to the environmental, what we call environmental injustice, 
uh, which is found pr predominantly in African American community, the concern is with the air, the concern is with the water, is with the food and the environment. And I feel that we need to get a leader who understands and embraces the, um, the, 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 and address the needs, which is a, it, with his, which is an issue with this. What and I will address this issue with urgency every time. So what problems and concerns do you have now about the air in those neighborhoods? I don't, I don't know, you know, I don't know how much more I can get. You know, we know that there's molding that takes place. When there's a concern with air, there's, if there's chemicals in the air, then obviously it's going to affect people's health. People's health can be affected by people getting ill. If they get ill, they might come up with a, a with a terminal illness. Now, I, I do have a doctor and PhD, but I'm not a medical doctor. But we want to make sure that whatever the concerns are, that those concerns are addressed. And what other concerns do you want to address when it comes to environmental injustice? I, I can answer the question again and say they can give you the same answer, which is our air, our water. We want to make sure there's fresh food, there's fresh fruit, and we want to make sure that the environment is clean as a whole. Uh, how clean is the environment right now in the city of North Charleston? Uh, Quentin, I don't know how to answer your question, but to tell you that we have a concern about the environmental justices that, that has been found in the African-American community. We would do a study and get more detail in regards to how the air has been affecting our community. Um, I have walked neighborhoods where people are concerned about, you know, smelling different chemicals that, and that and impede their, what they feel, their progress in their neighborhood. And, and um, what's the, you know, and what else have they found out in those neighborhoods when you've been walking through those neighborhoods with those neighbors? When you say what else have they, they who, Quentin? The neighbors. The, the, the team that has been walking, talking, I can answer the same question again. And the same, and the same answer is going to remain the same. They have issues with air. They're concerned about the water that, that they receive in their neighborhood. They're concerned not, about not getting fresh fruit, uh, fresh vegetables, uh, even, you know, going fishing and making sure that that environment is healthy. Okay, Judge, let me move on because we're actually running yeah, out of time. Yeah, I think so. That's a good idea. Because <laughs> I've answered that question about as much as I can at this point. Thank you, Judge. But let me ask you this. Uh, how do you foresee the city's population to grow at a rate comparable to what is forecast to be in the next few years? I foresee the population to have a major growth. And I look at it as looking at uh, smart growth. Um, I will, as, as the city grow, I will foster a more inclusive and participatory style of governance where the community and organizations have a greater voice in decision-making processes. I will also prioritize um, transparency and open communications to ensure that all voices are heard. I will place a strong emphasis on equity and social justice and on all policies and initiatives. And I will work to reduce disparities which I think has a lot to do with growth and access to education, um, access to housing, healthcare, and economic opportunities, particularly in the marginalized uh, communities. So I would enhance um, services for individuals experiencing homelessness, um, including mental health and addiction treatment um, to address the root causes uh, of homelessness and its impact on the community. You know, I have been living in North Charleston for well over 45 years. And some parts of North Charleston looks the same. And I will address these issues. I will speak to it. Okay. I will address the issue, again, of, of housing affordability more comprehensively, yes. including exploring rent control measures, yeah, I'll uh, that. affordable housing incentives, and yes. as well as tenant protections to ensure that residents of all income um, levels yeah. can afford to live in the city of North Charleston. Yeah, and I'll get to that in just a minute, but let me ask you this. You talk about growth early in this interview, so what has been the growth rate in North Charleston over the past four years? Well, there's obviously there's been a great growth rate, and, and as my as mayor, my vision for the redevelopment of, I'm looking at, look at the redevelopment of, of the former naval uh, base property in North Charleston, which we want to uh, revitalize and uh, to, to increase, to help in the continue growth. You know, looking at the old naval base property where there's 95 years of history there. During the Cold War, most people don't even know that uh, that's where a lot of our submarines were housed. So my vision for redevelopment of the former um, naval base property in North Charleston focuses on creating a vibrant, uh, sustainable and inclusive communities, which uh, which is a part of our growth that enhance the quality of life for residents and attract visitors. So I want to foster a mixed use development in these areas. And yeah, a uh, blend of residential, commercial, and recreational spaces. 
And I believe that this approach will create walkability, uh, livability, uh, where people can ride their bikes through the neighborhood, where right. people can live, work, and play. And I yeah. want to give emphasis yeah. to the, to the uh, sustainability and the green design principles incorporating uh, energy efficient buildings, and I, uh, yeah, green yeah. spaces and renewable energy uh, sources and, and environmentally responsible infrastructure. Yeah, I, I wish I could talk to you more about that and I'll get to that in a second, but I'm running out of time, Judge. But going back to that growth rate, where do you see that growth rate heading in the next five years for the city? I, like I, I just gave you an example of one with the old naval base. I, I also want to uh, mean, I, the I entire prioritize city. proactive measures to ensure the safety and resilience and sustainability of the community. And I think that's a part of the growth. I will work with climate experts and stakeholders uh, to create a comprehensive climate and adaptation uh, plan that assesses current vulnerable uh, communities and identify future risk and outline specific uh, strategies for resilience. I think this is important because the, the city is, is growing so rapidly. So I will how much has the city with neighboring has, cities yeah, yeah. and regional organizations to develop coordinated responses, um, dealing with our climate uh, challenges and including joint evacuation, which is a part of the growth and disaster right. recovery plans. Well, yes. You know, and, being a researcher, I will collect and analyze data well, uh, that's related me. to climate change and how it impacts our community and extreme weather events to inform uh, decision making and adapt strategies as needed as well. I understand you're trying to get your platform out, Judge, but I have to have a lot but of that, But that's, that, that I am trying to get my platform out, but that's yeah. part of my answer to yeah. how you yeah. said how I see the city in the next five years. That's well, how I see it. Where is that we number? Can't, we cannot ignore climate. Uh, we cannot ignore the climate change. Yeah, we know that, that. As, much, as large as the city gets, it's gonna, we're going to have to put strategies in place to make sure that people are safe at all times. How has that data from the pace of growth allowed the city to understand existing and potential future conditions of the city? How has the data from what, um, Quentin? Yes, ma'am. How has that data from the pace of growth allowed the city to understand existing and potential future conditions of the city? The, the only way I can answer that, uh, uh, Quentin, is that when we talk about the growth, I will promote the mixed income housing developments to create a diverse communities that include both affordable and market rate housing. I think it's important to implement uh, different strategies to protect existing affordable housing from uh, gentrification, displacement, and demolition. Um, I think part of our growth, because if if I if twenty percent of our city now is under poverty level, I need I will explore uh, policies such as rent control, um, such as inclusionary zoning. Um, such as housing preservation funds, you know, so I would definitely encourage development near public transportation hubs or, or to reduce the need for a long commutes and, and car ownership. Well, and I think that all that has to do with looking at how the city is growing over the next, um, five years. Yes, no worries. I'm definitely running out of time now. I have five minutes left, but where exactly is the existing affordable housing in the city right now? The, uh, our, the existing affordable housing is throughout the city. As we know, in, that Liberty what, Hill. What areas? Okay. Well, we know that Liberty Hill just has, has a, an existing affordable house. You know, back in, the, I think it was 18, uh, 1871, where four families came together, bought 112 acres of land. Um, and the first thing that they built was a school because they understood the importance of education. And now there's affordable housing there, right there on Liberty Hill. But as mayor, I'm going to make sure that there is a diverse community uh, where affordable housings are in different communities where people can live together uh, and, and grow together. And that's, a, that's important to me. What's more important for the city of North Charleston? Is it building new homes and commercial space or rehabbing, expanding, and better utilizing the existing homes? I think what's more important in the city of North Charleston is getting a high crime rate down. I mean, you talk about know, housing. And I'm I sorry. think, but when you ask me what's more important, I think that's what's more important. Well, and I think what's housing. more important is building a diverse community. That's what's more important. Having a safe community, having a livable community, making sure that North Charleston is a truly world class city where people can live together, where there's public safety, where police officers are on foot, they're back on bike. They're building relationships with members of, of the community. Uh, when team building takes place, there's collaboration. When there's collaboration, stakeholders take an interest. When stakeholders take an interest, the community is strong. When the community is strong, crime is reduced. And the reason crime is reduced is because criminals don't hang around. Well, let me go to back me, down. that's what's more important. To have a well-empowered, learned 
community. That's what's important to me. And right now, what's important on Quentin's full substance is my question, Judge. Well, let me ask you, what's more important right now in your district? How do you identify and also develop those unique characteristics when it comes to residential, commercial, and mixed use? Are you saying, are you saying my district? Because, you know, City of North Charleston has... Um uh, are you saying in my particular in my no, particular I'm, I'm saying, district? I'm saying. Are you saying in the city of North Charleston as a whole? Where in the city do you identify and also develop those character, the unique correct characteristics when it comes to residential, commercial, and mixed use? Well, I well I would I just mentioned the old naval base uh, a question. I'm I'm interested in the community off Spruill Avenue to make sure the residents there have access and that there are strategic hubs that are put out. I've also mentioned already that I have lived in North Charleston for 45 I'm years that and that Liberty Hill looks the same. I've said that already. So let I'm me also, ask you. Let me also say no. Let, let me finish. I also want to look at the fact that there's Ferndale that's there as well. Yeah. The, some areas of North Charleston has looked the same where there's been growth spurts in other areas. Why is it that, no, that Liberty Hill still looks the same, Ferndale still looks the same, but if you go just a couple of streets down and get into Park Circle, that area is is, is a, a bursting with growth. It is absolutely beautiful, and I think that's how all of North Charleston should look. Well, so as, as Mayor of North Charleston, I want to make sure that the uh, funds are allocated uh, equally and fairly, and I want to make sure that the, the entire city of North Charleston looks like some beautified sections of North Charleston. Well, well yeah, other sections of North Charleston, like the south side of North Charleston, some of the neighborhoods that I just mentioned, I'll right. include Days Hill and Liberty right, Park. Right, right. Well, some of these areas still look the same. Russelldale still looks the same. Okay. And other areas are growing with, with spurting and growth. We need to make sure that there's equity there, and that's what we're going to bring. We're going to bring equity, we're going to bring transparency, and we're going to bring inclusion. But going back to Park Circle, Judge, you mentioned that, and you talk about the beautification that's going on there. So where is historic downtown North Charleston? His, I, I just gave you an example in 1871. No, 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 no. Family, I'm saying, four you? families came together and there's where? Liberty Hill. That's historical to me. And well, I want to make sure that that is preserved. That is historical to me. That This is where four families came together, put their resources together, purchased 112 acres of land, and the first thing they built was a school. It was a thriving community, probably up until 1970. A, a thriving community. There were business owners. Uh, the people were growing. They were building. The, the the community based on history was absolutely beautiful. But now that history is not as preserved as it should have been, in my opinion. You know, that's one of the, the communities that we would look at to make sure it is still preserved. I crime guess. is high in I some guess, of these I communities. Yes, we got the lower the crime. When crime is lowered, then people will want to move back into those communities. And so it what was it? to thrive again. So what was the murder rate in Ferndale last year? I don't know what the murder rate in Ferndale is, but I know in the city of North Charleston as a whole, I know that one in 95 citizens are subjected to a violent crime. I do know that. And I know that with that being the high rate that we have to reduce the crime in North Charleston, which is why I want to bring back uh, police officers building relationships with people in the community, building with our stakeholders. But Judge, let me ask you then, going back to obviously what I talked about earlier, historic North Charleston. Where should a downtown North Charleston be, in your mind? My mind is downtown North Charleston should be inclusive with uh, uh, Liberty Hill as well. I where think that should it be? be part, I think that should be part of downtown Charleston. But where, where, where downtown, should it be? I, I think it should you know, come out a little further to where downtown Charleston is right now. Okay. But Quentin, what's really important to me is not the location of downtown Charleston. There are so many other issues that's addressing and facing North Charleston right now. The location of a particular place is not going to change the behavior of, or the characteristic of, 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 of what North Charleston should be looking like. Well, what we want back. to do, my main issues is education. I want to speak to education. My main issue is high crime rate. You know, we want to re-envision and put a task force in place. My main issue is mental health. My main issue is making sure that we have public transportation that will serve all the citizens of North Charleston. That. Yeah. When I, we I, do that, I, I think that we'll build a strong community. We can look at the location of where uh, North Charleston should look like and, and where a downtown North Charleston should look like. But before any of that happens, I want to make sure people are not being... Uh, subjected to gentrification. I want to make sure people are not subjected to being displaced. So how I want to make sure that, that there's you, not demolition. You, I want to make sure that we explore policies that would include all people. How do we slow down gentrification? I want to make sure there's quality of life. What is the quality of life right now in the city of North Charleston? 
Well, Quentin, if people are subjected to high crime rate, if people don't have public transportation, if there's not affordable housing, if rent uh, is uh, sky high, um, then the quality of life is not as well as it should be. And that's what we want to address. And those are some of the things that we want to make sure that everybody is treated with dignity and respect and that everybody get the same services and that everybody uh, will be on a schedule to where uh, there's maintenance, a schedule, a public um but uh, public works is to have everybody on the same schedule where some areas they don't have to call to get their ditches clean and some areas they do. We want to make sure that everybody is on the same schedule. Again, it's about inclusion. It's about transparency. It's about equity. So where in the city of North Charleston do ditches need to be cleaned right now, Judge? Where does a ditch need to be clean right now? Yeah, with ditches. How many ditches? Need I, to I don't I don't go around looking in ditches, but when I was in the Acabee community, some of the residents up there told me that they had to a call for the ditches to be clean. And then when I went to other sections of North Charleston and asked the same question, they said they did not have that problem. Now, going back to, uh, obviously, as you mentioned earlier, Judge, about affordable housing, how many high dis density of apartments are there right now in the city? Which, again, I know you're good with, the t you want uh, numbers? I'm not interested in numbers. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I'm well, here's what I'm voters. interested in. I'm interested in, in you understanding this, in all due respect. When there's 117,000 people in North Charleston or thereabout, and 20% of those people are below the poverty line, I'm more interested in making sure that these people are being taken care of. How many houses, density houses, uh, how many affordable houses occur right now? It's not affecting the people who are still suffering that, that do not have affordable housing. It has nothing to do with the people who are still being displaced. These are the well, issues me, that, I, well, that, I, that, I, that I'm interested well, in looking well, at. Let me ask you this, Judge. Where, where is subsidized housing in the city of North Charleston? Uh, there's stuff to buy houses throughout the city of North Charleston, Quincy. We just talked about North. Where? We just talked about North Charleston. Uh, well, I mean, on, on you, you said as a whole, that's Liberty Hill, but I'm talking yeah, about the rest said, of the city, we're, we're, You asked me, and I'm giving you an example. We talk about as uh, we're talking about that on Liberty Hill as where the uh, the latest um, affordable houses are. But as mayor, we're going to make sure that affordable houses are in the in diverse communities. Well, we we want to make sure whether you live in North Charleston, the North Wizard States, or whether you live on Liberty Hill. Or whether you live in Park Circle or any other uh, area, whether you live in uh, parts of Kings Grant or Westcott, we want to make sure that affordable housing are existing so it can so that people can live together in what we want to call a diverse community. Well, how many apartments do you need to drive down the housing cost, Judge? It's not how many apartments we need. What we need is get a relationship with the economic developers take a researcher of the area that they want to build in, and then that's how we would come up with our answer, Quentin. 